Hey YouTube, Rich McCall, Rich McCall Serpents, and this is uh, video number two of my uh, leopard pied uh, orange dream het pied clutch. Five eggs total, and I'm going to show you how I set up eggs. And this is just one method that, of all the bazillion methods out there that, that one can do. And I did not think of this myself, I actually found an article on World of Ball Pythons that uh, explained how to do this, it's the substrateless method. So. We're going to do this. Uh, so first thing first, I'm going to pull the water out of this dish. Mama is in a separate tub right now because she's not a happy camper. And uh, I didn't want her to eat me uh, while we did this. And I apologize, I didn't actually plan this out all that well. But hold on while I put the water down. All right. So back to the vid. So what I do is I grab a tub, and I did this beforehand, but uh, I use the old-fashioned method of running on tape. Yep, I know. So, awesome by Frosty, that's the uh, leopard pied is the awesome, and Frosty is my orange dream head pied. Both of those steaks, by the way, came from uh, Justin K, uh, Justin Kubica. Um, who is just an awesome guy and makes some fantastic animals. So I've written down today's date, uh, June 30th, is 2016. Um, and then 55 days from now is 824, and two weeks out uh, is 810. Two weeks out matters because, as you'll see, we're gonna put the um, wrap over the top of this to keep it the, uh, um, the water uh, while we put it in the incubator and uh, I need to know when to take that wrap off. And as the article on World Ball Python said, you can keep these covered completely till two weeks out. At some point, supposedly the eggs need to breathe. I don't know what that point is, but I can tell you 100% that you can go till two weeks out from day 55. I followed that religiously. This is my third season doing this, and uh, I have a really nice hatch rate. And uh, so I don't know at what point the eggs actually need to breathe on their own, but they simply don't need it for at least that first part, because quite frankly, I've done it. So the tub also, by the way, has holes in the end. Where that black tape is, that's electrician's tape, just covering those holes. And I'll pull that off at the two-week part, too, so there's a little circulation um, through there. And then just because it allows me to put the tub in in any direction whatsoever inside my incubator i don't got to worry about it i simply put a piece of tape with you know today's date and the uh 824 on on day 55 day and uh you know so inside i've got two pieces of the old-fashioned fluorescent light um whatever this stuff is called i actually can't remember what this stuff is called anyways uh, light diffuser, I think, is what this is. So I just got a big sheet of this um, from Home Depot and clipped it. I thought it snaps pretty easily. You gotta watch it as you do it. And I use two lengths because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put water in the bottom of this that's going to be um, uh, as full as the first layer. So there's then a whole other layer of diffuser that's going to be between the water and the eggs. Now the negative to this versus using perlite or any other methods that other people do, is if the eggs are single, if they're not attached to each other, they can roll. You have to watch that big time with this one. But if you're really careful, it doesn't really matter. You can do it, you can set it up so they don't roll on you. You just gotta be careful putting it in. And in about a week or two, they'll have settled into the grid, uh, you know, because they're obviously soft eggs, right? And they won't roll um, once you've done that. Now, luckily these eggs, all five of these, are attached to each other and I have already candled these and uh, they all have veins or nice big giant fluffy eggs they got a little spot on that one right there that may window paint on me later on but I'm really not worried about that whatsoever but I will keep my eye on that and uh, hold on a second and I will uh, show you how I candle excuse me I reach over here all right so all I do to candle is take a really bright LED light, you know, it's a cheapy light from my Home Depot actually, and I just put it, I don't know if this will show it or not, but I just put it against the egg, and you should be able to see the veins there. And again, I'm not sure if the camera will pick them up, but I can see the veins pretty good here. I think the camera's showing them, at least 
a little bit. That's all you got to see. That's all you got to do. Don't got to do anything else to cantle an egg. None of the fancy stuff other people do. You don't have to use that old-fashioned chicken egg cantler where you put a light on the bottom on a fancy thing and stick it on top. You don't got to do that. Just a bright enough flashlight. Just touch it. You should see veins. If you see veins, you're good to go. All right. So, now I'm going to put the camera down. So I need both hands for this next part because this is the most important part. I'm going to move the eggs into the bin. And you can do this two ways. You can put the water in already beforehand, which is what I'm actually going to do. Put that down. And I've got a just a bottle of water that uh, has been sitting here in the, it's been in the incubator, so it's already 80 degrees. Hold on a second, I'm going to put this down. I apologize. Poor plane on my part. Should have clicked the lid off the water beforehand. All right, so and simply I'm going to pour the water in. I'm going to double check it in a second, too. And again, the, the amount of water I'm putting in is actually the amount that it should need for the last two weeks from when I pull that saran wrap off until they hatch. That's all I'm looking for here is that amount of water. And uh, I'm just going to check it on a flat surface. I'm going to put it on top of my uh, little retic cage here. There's my little boa, by the way. Hey, monkey. His name is Monkey. Actually, she's a she, but she's, she is Monkey. Here's my super dwarf retake, but I'm just putting this up top. I'm just looking at that water level, and that's good enough right there. I could push it and put a little bit more in there and stuff, but I really don't need to, so I'm not going to. All right, so back down here, and there's the eggs, and uh, I'm going to put this camera down one more time again because I need to pick these up with both hands. Don't want to screw it up. All right, put that in there. They want to roll a little bit. I'm squishing them back. And it uh, looks like they're actually attached. Uh, those two at the bottom are attached to each other, and then the other three are attached. They're not actually attached everywhere else. If these were rollers, I would also mark them with uh, a little line. I'm sorry, not rollers. If these were not attached to each other, I would mark them with a little line, as you see other people do with a pencil or whatnot, to uh, show the orientation. And um, um, that way, if they roll, you know it. And I don't know how long you can go. Maybe someone who has experience with this can tell me. Um, I've definitely rolled eggs at this point in time by accident. I've definitely had the female roll eggs on me, um, and it's never mattered. I usually write roller on top of the eggs if that happens, just so I can watch it. I've been doing that for a couple years now, and every time I've written roller on an egg, that egg is hatched. And so there is a certain amount of time you can go where an egg can completely roll over. Um, and as you know, you're not supposed to let your snake eggs roll. Um, and at some point they definitely will firm up, but at what point that is, I do not know. I have definitely successfully hatched eggs out that have rolled in the first 24 hours. Um, I don't know how long you have, and, and quite frankly, why would you push it, right? So just try not to roll them in the first place. So the next step, put you down and you can gaze at the eggs. While I do this, again, two hands. I'm going to use press and seal. I've used saran wrap, I've used cling wrap. The press and seal is slightly different. It has like a sticky section on it. And I just think it works better. Um, use what you want to use. The, the, what you're doing is putting a barrier over the top. Um, the cling wrap simply seems to stick better. It will, as you see now, I've just done this. It sticks to itself a little bit. And you gotta walk that. So gently I'm gonna do that. Roll across the top, make it firm. And then I'm just going to run my finger. I'm just going to run my finger across the edge. And that will, with the cling wrap, seal it in. With saran wrap, you know, the other plastic wraps, you sort of have to make sure they're sticking where you want them to. And then, uh, honestly, you could probably leave it just like that and you wouldn't have to do anything else. You really wouldn't need a lid even for this. But you, know, you, can't, you can't stack it. So uh, I'm going to put that lid on. on the top, click it down, and then I will 
put this in my incubator. I'm not going to show you that part. It doesn't need to be shown really and truly. Um, but that is the substrateless water method of incubation at the two week mark. Again, just to reiterate, at the two week mark, which will be 810 uh, for these eggs, I will open the lid, I'll pull that saran wrap off, and uh, I'll pull the electrician's tape off the two holes in the end to get a little circulation. And, you know, I'll keep my eye on it for the next two weeks, make sure that water level doesn't drop. Uh, generally, if it's really, really dry uh, in my room, and sometimes it is, I'm in the Bay Area. The Bay Area tends to be a dry um, area. I might have to add a little bit more water to it, but um, generally I don't have to. So again, the water level I chose was a level that will last that two weeks. And then uh, at day 55, uh, just like everybody else in the world, I'll start looking. I generally get day 58 to 60 hatches but I like to be aware and watching the eggs by day 55 because I have gotten hatches that early. And uh, so there you go. Substrateless water method, again, is not my method originally. I did find an article on World of Ball Pythons a couple years ago. Um, that's what I went with at that point. And uh, so there you go. This is Rich McCall of Rich McCall Serpents. And uh, stay tuned at the end of August. Let's see what we get. The, uh, the big hope, of course, for me for this clutch is that what I would really love is a male leopard orange dream pied. Um, that's the ultimate right there. Um, as we sell five eggs, so you know, I'll take what I can get. Uh, leopard orange dream are awesome, um, even without the pied, they're just a really cool snake. Uh, orange dream and leopard mix really well. So, uh, there you go, YouTube. Rich McCall, Rich McCall Serpents. We'll see you at the end of August for an update. Bye bye.